All right, guys, want to welcome back Andrea KGB Lee. Obviously, the first guest we had on. Uh, we're here to talk about your match on March 11th in Las Vegas, the Invicta 16 card. It's your first mm -hmm. pro fight in Las Vegas. It's going to be your first fight on UFC Fight Pass. Can you talk a little bit about what that exposure means to you? Um, well, fighting in Vegas, you know, is a big deal because everybody pays attention to all the fights that go on in Vegas. And the fact that it's on UFC Fight Pass I means there's so many people watching. Um, and, and not to mention, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people to, that I'm going to have to I feel like that I really need to impress and put on a good show in front of because, I mean, Dana White could be there, uh, you know, and then not to mention some of the other UFC fighters that might be fighting that, you know, that coming up that weekend or whatever might be there as well. So it's, it's a big deal. It is, and you're going to go up against Sarah Delio. She's fought some big names, most notably a, a mm -hmm. quick loss to Ronda Rousey. She's eight years older yeah. than you, um, subsequently has a lot more experience. Four of her last fights have went the distance, though. What do you see is your biggest advantage over her? Uh, I feel like that my head movement and, and uh, my angles and stuff will be there. You know, and I'm, I'm well-rounded. I feel like she's going to come in trying to take me down. So um, whatever happens, I feel like I'm comfortable with wherever the fight goes. You've both <laughs> spent time in Invicta. Is, is this a fight that's ever been approached with the two of you before? No, never. I mean, I think she just, I don't know. I, I mean, on record, I don't see where she's fought at 125 before. So I think this could be her first time. They say she's made 125 before, but I don't really know 100% about that. Um, but as far as I know, on record, I'm the first person that she's fighting at 125. Do you feel like this is going to be your biggest fight, or do you think that was with Montessori? I think so far, yeah, this is definitely going to be my biggest and toughest fight. My, I mean, Roxanne Monteferi, she was, you know, and, and, you know, has been up until this moment, you know, the, the biggest fight that I've had. But I feel like with Sarah D'Alia, it's going to change the thing. You know, and she, she fought at 145 and 135, like, her entire career. So, uh, you know, she's going to have, she's going to be extremely strong and aggressive. She thinks that, you know, I'm, I'm just a, I'm a smaller opponent than what she's used to. She's just going to be able to come in and like destroy me. But I don't, I don't see that happening. I think it's, it's going to go a lot differently than she planned. Anything specific you're doing outside of your normal training to prepare for this? Not really. I mean, um, you know, I train the same way with every fight. I just, you know, sometimes I'll focus more on one thing than the other, like, uh, you know, defending takedowns and stuff like that. You know, I've asked, so defending takedowns has been a big part of this camp and uh, just defending a whole lot of stuff on the ground in case it ever gets to that point. Um, working off my back a lot. Uh, trying to keep control, you know, trying to stay on, trying to stay top side uh, if it does go to the ground and working a lot of uh, wall work and working off the cage. Um, but the only thing that's, that's really different, you know, between, you know, like, leading up to this fight and all the stuff that I haven't had to do before is like having to like fill out all the paperwork, you know, that the commissioner has us do, you know, I have to get an MRI and an MRA, and, you know, getting, getting all that done and being pressed for time is kind of stressful. So, I mean, but other than that, you know, everything else is the same, I think. Now for the fight pass preview, you actually have a clip used in kind of like the highlights used to promote this whole month's fighting cards that they have. Is that something you were aware of? Um, actually, I was told by some, one of my, my friends, my training partners, they were watching and they were like, hey, you're in this, you're, you know, there's a clip of you um, on the UFC Fight Pass video. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm not sure what they saw and, and what was said or what, what I was doing or who I was fighting. It's just but, a uh, short clip of, of you kicking. Uh, I actually can't tell who it is the way they've edited it, but I, I, I mean, I don't know what that adds to this, but obviously you know that you've got people looking at you, and obviously mm -hmm. it's not just a highlight clip. You know, they're looking at you because you're, of your resume and what you're about to do. And, and we want to give away a free month of Fight Pass to one of the viewers mm -hmm. here so that they can watch your fight coming nice. up. So according to, you know, the game plan you have in place, your hand gets raised at the end of the fight. What do you think this win is going to establish, and where do you want it to move you next? I feel like it will move me into a contending spot for the title. Um, I feel like if I, if I beat Sarah Dialio, then then 
whoever fights for the belt next, you know, I'll I'll get that shot. Is what I think. That's what I feel like. Um, um, this is this is a huge opportunity for me. This is a big fight for me. And if I beat Sarah Dialio, then it's going to prove, you know, that I deserve that that spot for the title. Because I mean, Sarah Dialio has already fought uh, Vanessa Porto, and she submitted her, you know, years ago. However long it was, I'm not sure. But and, and now she's fighting for the the, the interim title. So. Maybe if I beat Sarah Dialio, I feel like I should have that opportunity. Okay, and I certainly hope that you get that opportunity. So, obviously, so do I. <laughs> wish you the best of luck. We'll be watching you March 11th. You. Down in the description, or excuse me, in the comment section, rather, I will pick a random comment, uh, and then we'll do a giveaway for the, the month of Fight Pass. Thank you, UFC, for allowing me to do that. And, again, before I get off here, anything you want to say to anybody listening right now? Uh, I just want to say thank you to all of my friends and family and fans that, you know, are supporting me. Uh, also, thank you to my sponsors who helped make this happen for me. I wouldn't be able to train daily, you know, without you. So, Apex Conditioning, Resistance Band Shorts, I really I really appreciate you and your help uh, and your sponsor. It means a lot to me. Fighter Alias, MMA Roadhog, Love MMA. Um, my coaches, Donnie Aaron and... Kendrick and everybody else that helps me out, all my tra- my training partners at Karate Mafia. Uh, thank you so much.